Welcome back. The topic of this video will be error messages and, and how to debug. I think it's probably one of the most important video of this tutorial. So let's reopen our model one um, um, that we created. So we have our boundary closed open and a simple duct. And um, if I run this and create my TX model, I run again my um, command and I have no problem. My system is created. I can uh, check the, the eigen modes of my system and we have Indeed, on the other screen, we have the three eigen modes in the region below 500 hertz. Um, so everything is fine with that model. Now, if we want, let's say, to introduce a new element, let's open the library too. So let's um, let's say we want to have an area change, for example. So if I copy and paste the area change um, and we will use again copy paste, uh, we will use another duct. So we have boundary condition, a duct, area change and another duct. And um, let's just have an area ratio, which is the downstream area is larger than the upstream. Let's put a ratio 1.2 and no losses. I can save this model and run it. So tx of my slx model and here what happens is I have an error message. It says that I have mean values inconsistent uh, error in eval steady state. And why is it so? Well the thing is although um, tx is an acoustic network model you have steady um, or you have mean quantities uh, like Mach number and things like that. And it was running fine without the area change. But what happened is here at the upstream side, I have my area that I impose my Mach number density and so on. So in my model, nothing thing uh, is making the density change, like there is no flame. Uh, speed of sound is also not changing. Um, what happens is um, my area jump has two impacts. It will change my area downstream of the area change and it will also change the Mach number. The problem is that those quantities, I also impose them and the same from the downstream side, which makes this inconsistency between downstream and upstream. You can't satisfy both boundary conditions and the uh, mean uh, equations uh, of the system. So the solution to, to solve for that problem is to impose the to impose the condition at only one of the two boundaries and let the system determine the mean quantities uh, everywhere. So for example, let's keep the upstream, let's say it's a, I want to mimic a test rig so I know my upstream condition. Then what I have to do in the downstream side is to replace everything with empty brackets and by doing so TX knows that it has to determine by himself by itself 
the quantities uh, at the boundary. And if I run it again, then the model is working. I have my um, my model and I can even plot my um, my stability map and here since we change parameters we have more modes. Okay so first um, most of the time when you will have the error message mean values are inconsistent it's because you are over determining the system. You are imposing too many uh, conditions and they cannot all be satisfied at the same time. Now the the interesting thing with TX is that um, the um, the quantities can be propagated in the in the network in the sense that you don't have to impose everything at one boundary. For example, let's say here I know my uh, area, but I don't know my Mach number, and I don't know my density, and my and I just know my geometrical area, then I can, and here, let's say I do not know my area, but I know my Mach number because I measure it. And I know my density, which is, I don't know, 1.3. By doing so, the density and Mach number that are imposed from the outlet will be propagated, adapted to um, to be consistent with the mean equations, and uh, therefore uh, the, the model will be working, and the other quantities that are imposed at the inlet will also be um, propagated within the whole network. So if I save my model, it should still run. So you don't have to provide all the information in one boundary, you can use a combination of of uh, different boundaries, but if you over constrain your system that will not converge. Similarly, if you do not give enough information, let's say you do not give density neither in the downstream and upstream boundary, then again the model will not converge and will stop in mean value con uh, mean value uh, calculations error uh, here the the messages um, it's not a problem of inconsistent uh, values but it's um, too few conditions so the mean value calculation cannot converge after 100 iterations so there is one missing parameter somewhere and this this has to be kept in mind for all the models you will be um, creating. Now let's say for example we use the merge element um, as if we were having an, an injector somewhere so I will have my duct connected to one part of the of the T junction and I have let's say another duct that is supposed to model my injector. Um, I will also connect it here. So obviously I also need a condition um, for for this for this branch so here it's I have my boundary element I have my outlet boundary element but for this branch I also need some boundary element uh, let's say it's a closed a closed end so let's say I impose everything here Mach number 1.2, um, sorry, Mach number 0.3 or 0.2, density 1.2. Uh, 
and at the outlet I leave everything empty for the system to determine. So what could be the problem here? I could have a problem determining the area. Here it's on this it is on the same branch as as this one. So the area here at the inlet is the same as from my injector, so this will work, but best practice would be to leave it empty and let the system determine it. It's the same for density, sp speed of sound, isentropic exponent, molar mass, fuel mass fraction, all that can be kept empty. And if I also put the Mach number empty, then what happens? I will run my model and I will have also mean values uh, calculation that do not converge. Why is it so? Well, I have imposed my Mach number here. I have imposed nothing here, the system has to determine it, and again here. So I have three branches, one, two, and three, but only one mean velocity, mean Mach number. So I do not provide to the system enough information. So I have to impose either a mean value here in this boundary element, or in this one otherwise it won't be it won't it won't have enough information for the model to converge so i have imposed here mach number of 0.2 i can let's say also impose a mach number on this branch um, let's say 0.1 so in my system i have mach number here and here and the system will determine what is in this branch to satisfy the mean computation equations. So that should be working. And yes, I have created my system. But one limitation with that is that you have to uh, know the mean quantities at the very um, end of your branches, so at the inlet or at the outlet. But if you're trying to mimic an experiment, maybe you don't have measurement in those locations. And this is where the mean flow block comes to place and it can be very convenient. So I can copy paste it in my system. And this block, you can also change area, Mach number, density and so on. But you so it it acts kind of a boundary or you have let's say the same parameters as in a boundary element, uh, but you can put it a anywhere you want in your network. What could be very convenient, for example, is let's say I do not have my my measurement of velocities at the outlet. I only have them on this inlets branch and I do not have it here at the inlet but just just after my area jump. So I connect my elements and here area I will let him determine and all the other quantities I will let the system determine but I could have here impose a uh, Mach number of, I don't know, 0.15. Um, in this scenario, it doesn't make a difference compared to imposing here because nothing will change the mean flow uh, in, the, in, in this part, but you get the idea. You could have other area changes and you could have a flame and so on that would change your mean values. Uh, so you could impose a mean flow 
here somewhere in the middle of your network. Let's check that it is indeed working. And yes, the model converged and we have our TX model. So the other sources of problem could be uh, if you use, for example, um, a temperature jump Obviously, if you here you impose a temperature ratio and uh, ratio of isentropic exponents, let's, let's keep it to one and temperature ratio of, I don't know, six. Um, if you also impose the density somewhere downstream and the density somewhere upstream that could contradict the ranking Huguenot equations of the temperature jump. So good practice again is to not impose density or any other parameters uh, on, on each side but just impose it in one side and uh, let the system and the um, equations that we implemented determine the quantities everywhere in the network. Okay, now let's see another source of what could be a problem with geometrical parameters. Let's say here, I know my area is 0.3 square meter. If I run my model, what's happening? mean values inconsistent. What is the reason for that? Well, I have imposed here an area of one and I have, have imposed here an area of 0.3. The problem is in this junction, it's supposed that um, the two areas are the same. So the one and two and the resulting one are the same. So you have constant area in this element. So you are trying to impose in those two branches a 0.3 and a 1 area and that contradict each other in this element. So what you have to do is impose the area only once, once in your network. Doesn't matter where, it can be at the inlet, at the outlet and then you build every branch relative to that area you impose. So for example, here I have area one and I want this to be 0.3. So what I have to do is to use an area ratio element and say that the area here, so the area here has to be 0.3 and the area here is 1 because it is imposed by, by, by this boundary. So here I can say that to obtain a 0.3 here, I will use this area ratio element and I have to impose, so the area downstream is 1 and the area upstream is 0.3 and by imposing that area ratio I can propagate and obtain a 0.3 area here. We can save now and run the model and it is working and we could even check in the model that the uh, quantities are the one we want. So closed end. Now that's the one called upstream end. So that is this one. So this one is just called closed end. I have to find it. It is, it should be this one closed end and the area is empty because those are the value we impose. But if we go to state, we have density Mach number 
and area. So we have ended our area that is 0.3 here. So as a takeaway, impose your quantities like area, density, speed of sound, isentropic exponent, molar mass and fuel mass fraction only one time in your system and let those quantities propagate in your network. Build everything in relative to this, uh, to, to what you impose in your system. So if you impose it here, every geometrical change, build it relative to this value using area change elements and impose only the strict minimum of what's necessary for mean flow, which is Mach number one time in your system. If you have a single longitudinal burner, if you have um, T junctions and several branches imposed, if you have N branch impose N minus one mean values and let the last branch be determined by the system. That way you will be sure you will avoid these mean values inconsistent uh, error message or you will avoid the uh, did not converge after 100 iteration error message. In both cases, you gave either too many or too few inputs to your system.